Hi, welcome back. My name is Attila Berebs. This is already the 14th lesson in our solar energy course. As you see, we are already covered most of the solar topics. In the first few chapters, we learned about the sun, the sunlight, its effects, the history of using the solar energy. We also saw how can we convert solar energy to heat energy, and my colleague was talking about how can we convert the solar energy into electricity. We spent three chapters for the different solar cells technologies. In this topic, we will proceed with the topic we started in the previous video. We will see the different possibilities of using solar energy at home. The pursuit of the use of solar energy is not new. It was self-evident, even in the ancient times, that this free energy can be utilized. Plenty of ideas emerged for the utilization of the solar radiation with home-built simple devices. In these two videos, I show you some of this equipment, but only those that have been proven to be easy to make, don't cost a lot of money, and can be useful accessories for our home. So I will explain in detail how can you build a solar bottle bulb, a solar food dryer, and some type of solar cooker. In the first few minutes, we will see how can we build a little solar bottle bulb. In one of the last video, I mentioned a similar but much more expensive device, the sun pipe, which can be seen in the left side of the slide. But the DIY bottle bulb can be helpful in the cases where this expensive device is not suitable. You can light up dark areas in your home during daytime using this green and sustainable compact with recycle used plastic soda bottles. After installation, this solar light bulb can provide approximately 55 watts of a light from the sun. You need just a few materials for completing this idea. You need a PET soda bottle, a galvanized iron, feet, some rubber sealant, and for the liquid, bleach and filtered water. Depending the roof material, you will need a piece from it because you don't want to look it different. On the picture, the roof material is a GI sheet so cut approximately 9 times 10 inches of GI sheet, corrugated to flat. It should be the same as the roof. At the center of the GI sheet, draw two circles, as you see on the photo. After that, cut the inner circle and cut the 1 cm difference radially, making strips and bend upwards, perpendicular the GI sheet. Here you see the step 4. Using sandpaper, scratch the surface around the upper third portion of the soda bottle where the GI sheet will be placed to allow the rubber sealant to stick better. After cleaning it, insert the bottle into the GI sheet until the upper third, as you see on the picture. Then apply rubber sealant on the strips above and around the area below. Wait a few hours at least to let it dry. As the step six, fill the soda bottle with filtered water and around 10 millimeter two capfuls of bleach. Cover it with its original cap. The next step is installing it into the roof. First cut a hole on the roof Similar to the bottle circumference, place the solar bottle bulb into the hole. Make sure it is firmly in place. Then drill four holes into the sheet on each side of the solar bottle bulb. After that, apply rubber sealant around the edges of the GI sheet of the solar bottle bulb to avoid leakage. Make sure to cover the rivets also. And as a final step, Place a protective plastic tube on the bottle cup and apply some rubber sealant. 
Drying is an excellent way to preserve produce, but exposing fruits and vegetables to direct light can cause a vitamin loss. The design on this slide relies on indirect solar power, meaning the drying food is not exposed to the sun, but instead to solar heated air. The solar dryer takes advantage of the natural process of rising hot air to operate effectively without any electric fans. <clears throat> As you can see in the detailed drawing, the design includes a long angled wooden box covered with clear plastic glazing and an open button end for air intake. Inside, the box holds diagonal layers of black metal screw. The vertical drying chamber on the top has a back door to access food drying trays inside. The sun's radiation passes through the plastic top of the collector box to the absorber screens, which retain heat. Air entering through the intake is warm as it passes over the absorber screens and then flows into the drying chamber. There, the heated air draws out the food's moisture before exiting through the vents just below the roof. The rising warm air creates a negative pressure at the bottom of the collector box, which draws in more outside air to replace the air that left through the top vents. Air will continue to heat and rise, passing through the collector box and into the drying chamber, as long as the sun is shining or the dryer has access to another source of heat. As you see, this drying chamber of this dehydrator supports 11 trays to hold up to 10 pounds of tiny sliced food, about 35 to 40 medium sized apples for reference. It can dry this amount of food in two sunny days or about half this amount of food in one sunny day because of better ventilation and reduced food mass. The temperature inside the chamber can easily soar to more than 60 degrees Celsius. On this slide, you can see the material and tool list which is required for preparing this dryer. As you see, this takes a bit more time to build than the previous items we covered until now, and also much more material to buy. But that is why I put it in this second DIY video. You need plywood, which is exterior grade for the trays, food grade screening, and a lot of other things, but I don't want to make the list too long, so I don't read it all. Most of the wood required for these solar food dehydrator plants can be cut from a single 1.25 by 2.5 meter sheet of 3 quarters inch thick exterior grade plywood. Measure and mark the plywood using the cutting diagram above as your guide. Note that the dryer sides are cut in a single pieces so there are no joints between the collector box and the drying chamber. Place the marked sheet of 3 quarters inch plywood on top of two saw horses and cut out the pieces using a circular saw. Be sure to cut straight lines because you want the dehydrator box to be airtight. Make flange cuts when cutting out the angles of the drying chamber and roof for the dehydrator side. After cutting out the two large sides, lay one on the top of the other and check to see if they are the same size and shape. If not, mark the areas that are different and trim the larger piece with a circular saw so that both sides match. Cut the remaining components from the plywood sheet and prime and paint the interior and exterior or all wooden pieces to reduce wrapping, which could create an ear leak. The next step is to make the braces. For this, cut some 3 quarters inch thick pine boards 
into strips using a rib guide on a circular or table saw. You will need to cut the following sizes, all of them 22 and 5 inches long. Six pieces measuring 3 4 inch by 3 4 inch, four pieces measuring 3 4 inch by 1 and half inches wide, and one piece measuring 3 4 inch by 5 and half inches. The 5 and half inch brace needs a be well done one side so that it will line up with the angle where the drying chamber and the collector box meet. You can cut this bevel with a circular saw, adjust it to a 116 degree. To install the braces, place the two large sides upside down and side by side on a seahorse so that they are balanced on their edges and spaced about two feet apart. Install the 3 4 inch by 5 and half inch bevel brace between the sides where the collector box and the drying chamber meet and set a 3 4 inch by 3 4 inch brace at the air intake end of the collector box. Be sure to pender the holes using number 8 countersink bit and fasten the braces in place with 1 and 5 uh, to 8 inch number 8 exterior grade Phillips screws. Know the two dehydrator sides should be held together by two braces. Do you remember that sheet of quarter inch exterior grid plywood in the material is? Cut a 24 inch wide piece from it that's the same length as the bottom of the collector box. In this design, the length is 6 feet and 11 inches. With the two joint sides still upside down on the saw horses, place a healthy strip of waterproof wood glue down both edges of the side pieces and on the five and half inch and three fourth inch braces you just installed. Then lay the quarter inch plywood bottom over the dehydrator sides and secure it in place with a one and one fourth inch exterior screws every foot or so. Now you are ready to install the drying chambers front. It is the painted 22 and half by 24 inch piece of three quarters inch plywood you have already prepared using the cutting diagram in step one. One of the fronts 24 inch long sides need to be beveled to fit tightly against the brace at the top of the drain chamber. Glue and then screw this piece, beveled edge on the top, to the front of the drying chamber. Make sure the bottom unbeveled edge of the front fits snugly against the angle at the top of the collector box. From the inside of the drying chamber, run a bead of silicone cup around the perimeter of the front of prevent air leaks. After you installed the front panel, you will notice that it ends about 5 inches below the top of the sides. The same situation will apply to the door on the back, which you will install later. These gaps are important for the function of the dehydrator because they serve as fans. Eventually, you will build vent covers, but all you need to do now is to grab a stempled gun and secure aluminum screening to the interior at the vents. Stapler the screen to the braces at the top and bottom of the vent openings on both the front and back of the drying chamber. While you are at it, also stamper aluminum screening over the intake vents at the bottom of the collector box, again from the interior. You can frame the air intake with three quarters inch wooden strip on the exterior if you prefer a finished look. The step six is to build the drying shelf support. These solar food dehydrator plants call for 11 supports for 11 three quarters inch plywood shelves inside the drying chamber. You can cut the three quarters by three quarters inch support from a one by six fine board with a circular saw using a rib guide. 
each support is 16 inch long except for the lowest support which is 15 and 1 fourth inch long to avoid the lowest brace inside the drying chamber measure and mark both sides of the inside of the drying chamber for the self supports spacing them one inch apart Prediate the holes before fastening the supports to the side of the drying chamber with one and one fourth inch exterior grade screws. Make sure you don't drill the screws so deep that their points project through the sides of the food dryer. The solar dehydrator roof is made of two pieces of three quarters inch plywood, preferably scraps you have lying around in your workshop. You also can create three quarters inch plywood by gluing together several pieces of the one quarter inch plywood left over from the cutting the front of the dehydrator. The roof is made up to 12 by 30 inch pieces with 30 degree bevels along one long edge so they can join tightly at the peak. Attach the roof pieces to the dehydrator sides and braces with one and one and fourth inch screws. It is time to get the solar dehydrator standing on its own four legs. These plants care for two front and two rear legs made from pressure treated two by fours and attached to the dehydrator using two three eight inch diameter by three inch long bolts, nuts and washers each. Install the two front legs first, cutting them 18 inch long with a 26 degree angle on the top end. Locate the front legs approximately six inches from the bottom front edge of the collector box. Predate the holes and secure the legs to the sides of the collector box using the nuts and washers. Approximately two inches from the bottom of the both legs, drill a half inch hole through that center to recite a half inch diameter steel axle mounted with two 8-inch diameter wheels. Know that the front legs are attached. You can lift up the dehydrator to measure for the two rear legs. Place a small level on the top shelf support inside the drawing chamber, then recruit a helper to lift the dehydrator until the unit is level, till you measure the distance from the peak of the roof to the floor. In these solar food dehydrator plants, the legs are 76 and half inches long. When preparing the rig legs, cut 30 degree angles from the centers of about two by fours on the top ends, so the legs will fit snugly to the roof of the dehydrator. As you are bolting the rear legs to the drying chamber, take care to the bolts won't interfere with the operation of the shelves. This dehydrator design calls for vents at the top of the drawing chamber on both the front and back, just below the roof. These vents are essential for effective operation of the food dryer. As cool air enters the intake at the bottom and becomes heated in the collection chamber, it must rise into the drying chamber where it absorbs moisture from the food before exiting through the upper vents. You have already stamped aluminium screens to the inside of the vent openings. Now you need to make vent covers to help control airflow when you are drying food. You will remember marking and cutting four, five and half inch wide and 12 inch long vent covers when you follow the cutting diagram for the sheet of three quarter inch plywood in step one. Grab a pair of these covers and prepare them for installation on the front of the dehydrator by cutting a 30 degree bevel along one of the long edges of each one. The front vent covers should be installed with the beveled edge and on the top, where it will have the covers fit tightly against the slant of the roof. To hold the covers in place along the bottom edge, you will need to screw a 2 by 24 inch strip of wood to the interior brace at this location on the front of the drying chamber. Some adjustments may be required for the vent covers fit well. 
To provide a little more sliding room, you can try adding a piece of bicycle inner tube between the wood strip and the front panel. To install the back vent covers, you will first need to build up the one and half inch wide brace at this location so it can support both the covers and the door, which you will install next. Attach a 3 4 by 3 4 by 24 inch strip of wood to the top half of the brace, then screw a 1 and half by 3 4 by 24 inch wooden piece to the top of the strip. You just place it on the brace. Drill pilot holes to avoid cranking the wood and be sure to stagger a screws for the first and second strips. Obviously, you will need a door to access the shafts inside the drawing chamber. The door is a 24 and half inch high by 25 and half inch wide piece of painted plywood that you mark and cut using the cutting diagram in step one. It should open by swinging down from the top, so fasten it to the back of the drawing chamber with two heavy duty metal rings that you have secured at the bottom using nuts and bolts. Instead of following the open door to slam against the dehydrator, you can rig it to stop parallel to the ground so that it can be used as a shelf when you are loading or unloading the dehydrator. Make a shelf stop by securing two strands of quarter inch braided nylon cord to the drawing chamber on one end at the top corners of the door on the other end. The door is one and half inch wider than the dehydrator, making it extend past the unit three quarters inch on both sides. This allows you to install four hook and eye fasteners, two on each side, to get a tight fit when you close the door. Finally, apply weather stripping around the perimeter of the door frame to create an effective seal. In this step, you will be installing materials inside the collector box to absorb and transmit the sun heat to the surrounding air. The absorber can be made of either black colored aluminum window screen or the type of metal rod used in plaster work. Also, screen is easy to work with and relatively inexpensive. Our test found that LAT produces higher temperatures. Because this design is for the best food dehydrator you can build, we recommend LAT for the absorber material. Harder sole sells LAT in 8 feet by 27 inch sheets. To make the absorber, you will need 622 and half by 69 inch sheets that you have trimmed to size with tin tips. Be sure to wear heavy bar clubs to protect your hands from your sharp edges of the screen. Then spray paint the lat strip black using high temperature fat paint. While the lat is drying, prepare the interior of the collector box by covering the bottom with heavy duty aluminum foil and gluing it in place. The layers, layers of lat will be positioned diagonally inside the collector box, extending from the bottom of the air intake up to the top of the collector box, just below the drying chamber. The layers of heavy metal lat need to be supported to secure a 3 quarters inch wooden strip diagonally on the interior side of the collector box using a 1 and 1 fourth inch wood screws, setting them at the same diagonal at which you will be placing the layers of flat. Set one strip of flat at a time on top of these strips, holding the layers in place by screwing a few screws into the wooden support at the side and bottom. At the top, you can bend the lead up and over the brace and fasten it into place with screws. Actually, you can use different absorber as well, for example, from beer cans as I explained in the last video. You need to cover the top of the collector box with glazing so the sun's energy can penetrate and be soaked up by the absorber. Any plastic glazing will work, but the best option for this dehydrator design is a strong fibrogas reinforces polyester FRP material. 
FRP is thick, durable, and translucent and used in many solar technologies. You can purchase this glazing in a variety of weights and lengths, then trim it to the fit the front of your dehydrator collector box using thin sips and a utility knife. Before installing the glazing, prepare the strips that will hold it in place on the top of the collector box by measuring and cutting 3 quarters inch wide by 1 8 inch thick aluminium bar stock to fit to the top of the box. Thread your holes on the aluminium strips. Lay the sheet of FRP smoothest side up on the top of the collector box. Set the top aluminium bar in place and drill through it pedrous holes through the FRP and into the dehydrator sides. Remove the glazing from the dehydrator and run a bead of silicon cork across the top edge of the collector box before carefully setting the glazing back into place. Secure only the top aluminium bar to the FRP and collector box with screws. Make sure the glazing is straight on the collector box throughout this process. The drying chamber will hold 11 rectangular trays for dehydrating food. You will want to build trays with wooden frames that will stand up, lots of use, but with screen bottom so air can circulate around the drying food. Use four 1 by 6 to make the frame components. Cut two of these boards into 22 and 1 fourth inch lengths and the other two into pieces measuring 16 inch long. Use a router with a 3 quarters inch straight bit and cutting guide to carve the 3 eighths inch deep rabbit on one side of both ends of every piece. Then rip all the boards into 3 quarters inch wide strips using a table saw on a circular saw with a rip fence attached. You should now have 22 pieces measuring 22 and 1 fourth inches long and 22 more pieces at 16 inch long, all of them 3 quarters inch thick and with rabbited ends. Your next step is to assemble the frames so they are perfectly square. Use a framing square to set up a jig and lay out the square up to 22 and 1 fourth inch long pieces and two 16 inch long pieces into a frame. Glue the pieces at each corner and secure the rubber joint with screw. Repeat these steps until you will build the frames for all 11 trays. After the glue dries, cut food grade screen to size and staple the screen to one side of each frame using a staple gun. You will nearly finish building the solar dehydrator. Just nail some shingles to the roof to shed the rain. Bought some 24 inch scrap 2x4 handles to the rear legs to make the unit easier to move around and you are ready to dry some food. There are a plenty of different design available on the internet. Most of them are very simple and easy to do it yourself. As you see on this slide, this is a not so complicated version than the previously detailed one. If you're interested in to build it, you can find more detailed information on the given website. There is a great need for solar cookers in hot, underdeveloped or developed nations of the world, mainly to save firewood and to reduce deforestation. It is a perfect idea in the rural folk in very poor nations where electricity, gas are not available. Excellent designs are available for making your own cookers. There are two main types of it. The box or flat panel type solar cooker and the parabolic solar cooker. I will show you examples of both. You can do it yourself. First, we will build the easier one, the box cooker. In one of my previous video, I was talking about it. It has a transparent glass or plastic top, one or more reflectors of shiny metal or foil line material may be positioned to bounce extra light into the interior of the oven chamber. 
the box should have insulated sides. Cooking containers at the inside bottom of the cooker should be dark colored or black. So this is a quite simple design. The temperature in the solar box cooker typically reaches 150 Celsius degrees. So let's see what is required to build it. Step one, gutter materials. Two cardboard boxes at different sizes, scrap paper, or other material for insulation, black spray paint, a glass panel for the top of the box, duct tape for attaching the aluminum foil, and as you see, you will need some tools, of course, but not as many as for the previous one. The next step is preparing the boxes. A shallow tray with less depth is better than the box with great depth in your box. This reduces sideboard area. Make sure that the boxes are not riddled with holes or tears. A hole can lead to a leak in heat and in pressure. It means that your food will not cook properly. If necessary, seal with duct tape and extra cardboard. Also check to see that one of the two boxes fit in other. The top of the boxes should be level with each other, or the walls of the inner, smaller box may be a bit shorter than the larger box. When you have the proper boxes, make the insulation. The space between the boxes should be filled with dry insulators, like dry peanut shell, newspaper, coconut fiber. The easiest way is the newspaper. Since I didn't have a paper shader on hand, I tore strips of paper by hand and made them roughly about one centimeter in wide. For effective heat trap, you need minimum 25 to 20 millimeter thickness. Make sure that the flaps of the larger box are not folded inward. The strips of paper were lightly crumped together and the generous layer of about five centimeters was placed on the bottom of the larger box. After this, the smaller box was placed into the larger box, and the rest of the paper was lightly packed into the sides of the box. As you see, I cut polystyrene EPS board and placed it between the boxes over the shredded paper. The next step is painting the interior of the box. Take the spray paint and paint the inside of the inner smaller box. That way, this aids in the radiation from the sun being absorbed by the black paint, which can cook the food quicker. Painting the smaller box before or after is entirely up to you, but I did it afterwards and it worked just as well. There are some ways to attach the reflecting foil. Using the duct tape, apply some loops on duct tape Dish the sticky sides out and place on both sides of the flaps of the outer box. Then take the sheet of aluminium foil and with the two sides down, place securely on the inner part of the flaps on the other box. That way the shiny sides will face out on both sides. Fold excess foil on the outer part of the flap and secure with more duct tape on the outside. When cutting the glass, depending on the size of the glass you have, you can either measure out the dimensions to fit the dimension of the inner box or of the outer box. Either way would work. The glass keep an even amount of pressure throughout the box in addition to the heat. The temperature in the box will also be raised as a result of the pressure applied and that builds up within the box from the sun rays. This has the food to cook quicker. Depending on the weight of your gas, you can either have more weight applied to increase the pressure within the cooker. Place the cut glass on the top of the box and you are done. But there are some tricks for better result. Use aluminium or steel tray. Be forewarned that opening, removing the glass will release all of the heat that was building within the box. If checking the temperature of the food, please make sure that you are absolutely sure that it's ready to be checked. Otherwise, you will have to wait again for the pressure and heat to build up again. 
tilting the box or slant face is needed for latitude greater than 15 degrees. For a family of three or four persons, you will need a box of at least four square feet collector's area. Box cookers collect both direct and diffuse solar rays and therefore they are good by cloudy skies as well. Preheat the box cookers by keeping it in the sun from 9 a.m. before placing the pots in it. Keep your cook protected from the wind. Keep a matte black sheet plate to absorb her at the bottom. This is important to absorb all the heat and transfer it to the pots. The other type of solar cooker is the parabolic cooker. It operates much like a magnifying glass does in the sun. Sunlight falling through a magnifier can create enough heat to start a fire. The cooker uses the dish shape to capture and concentrate the the UV rays of the sun, much like a magnifying glass does. The result is a cooking area that works very well. On this slide, you see what you need for this type of solar cooker. So find an old dish or just get the one from your neighbor's house. Buy a roll of mirror foil decal or a roll of shared adhesive chrome foil. You need some thick iron wire and screws or a copper plate to make a little platform to hold a pan, water kettle or a coffee maker. The first step is preparing the dish. So remove all electronics, cables and the antenna head. It is important to begin by cleaning the dish truly. A wire brush or a low grit sanding paper will do the nice job and rotten the surface for the glue. Then clean it and as a step two, attach the foil smoothly on the dish. Or in case you have an aluminium dish like I have, just remove the paint and polish it. Not a short task, but it is worth to do it. I then formed a copper plate and attached it to the receiver bracket in order to get an even heat distribution for the hot pan. You will need to have a sturdy base that can hold the dish without tipping over. This can be a square wooden or two or more short planks of wood fastened together. It is critical that your hanging pot be positioned so the focused reflection of the solar cooker strikes the center of the bottom of your pot. Your cooker should be at 90 degrees angle to the sun. During the day, as the sun crosses the sky, you will need to rotate your parabolic dish to keep the sun's energy focused on the bottom of the pot where the heat is needed. So cooking requires your presence as it needs realignment every 30 to 45 minutes to be effective. I adjusted the focal point balancing on the base of bricks, but you can use the original tilting mechanism of the satellite dish. To reach maximum efficiency in cooking, you need to insulate your cooking pot in some way. This means either placing your cooking pot inside a clear cooking bag. Simply pull the bag up around the pot and keep it loose while tying the bag closed at the top. This creates a layer of air insulation and the sun energy passes right through the bag and heats the food in the covered pot. The temperature measured inside the pot was averaging between 165 to 220 Celsius, so it's easy to prepare a normal dish. Of course, the bigger the satellite dish, the faster the cooking process. Today we were talking about some simple design you can do it yourself. This makes fun and possibly reducing the electric bill. Thanks for watching. Bye. No.